thing. Uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for joining us uh, this morning. We're really, really excited uh, by this morning's session. We've got a great lineup um, for you this morning. Uh, we're going to start off uh, with Andy Taylor, who is going to give us a brief introduction to um, uh, to Talent Team and, of course, uh, our fabulous uh, product and uh, topic for today, which is SAP Litmus, which is very much a, a, a critical element of the SAP's learning portfolio. Uh, then we've got Mr. Uh, Litmus himself, the one and only Udi, uh, Udi Verma, who's going to uh, take us through a short demonstration of uh, the SAP solution. Uh, what uh, Udi doesn't know about uh, SAP Litmus is probably worth knowing. And uh, like me, he's in South London today and suffering this ridiculous heat. We always like to put a plug in for the weather here. And then we uh, we turn over to the highlight of today um, and are hugely grateful for Richard Berridge, who's the uh, Learning Technologies Head at uh, HP Hewlett Packard Enterprise, uh, who is going to take us uh, through um, a, a bit of an overview of how they've used the solution to huge effect within their business and uh, obviously the opportunity to do a bit of Q&A as well towards the end. So uh, without further ado, welcome again and uh, Andy, over to you. Thank you very much, Donald. And uh, hi, everyone. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. I just wanted to tell you a, a little bit about Talent Team and why we're <clears throat> so excited to become the first uh, authorised SAP Litmus partner in, in the UK. So at Talent Team, learning is, is literally embedded into our, our DNA. It's, it's how we all started. I mean, myself, um, I used to work in the, the learning content space. I was acquired by SAP back in 2012 and spent a good sort of four or five years uh, actually working under the leadership of, of Donald within SAP Education. Um, and then about five years ago, I joined Talent Team uh, to focus purely on SAP learning and, and talent solutions. And when I look at the, the rest of the team here, many of my colleagues um, also all started uh, within the world of learning. So many of us here at Talent Team worked for Plateau, uh, another learning solutions provider that was acquired by, by SAP. So I think it's fair to say we know learning like no other, and we've had the privilege to support um, some of SAP's leading customers with their, their learning transformations. Uh, and whilst our experience does span the entire HR and talent spectrum, Talent Team have always been recognised as the SAP learning partner, which is why we're so excited about the opportunities that uh, SAP Litmus presents for our customers, both existing and, and also future new customers as well. Uh, so Talent Team, we've been trading for about 10 years now, um, and over that time we've grown significantly to support the entire uh, spectrum of SAP learning and talent solutions. So, you know, for, for SAP Litmus, we can act as a, a single point of contact, catering to, to all customer needs from, you know, initially configuring and enabling the solution, supporting customers post go live, creating integrations with existing business systems, and of course, uh, acting as a reseller as well. So you have, you know, sort of one single, single point of contact but for all of your needs regarding the solution. Um, so th um, that was it really, just a quick overview of Talent Team and now time to hand over to Uday. Yes, uh, let me share my screen as well. Uh, yes, so to give you a brief overview of, of Litmus as a solution. So uh, we've been in the LMS space since 2007, so about 13 years now, 13, 14 years now. Uh, what Litmus is known on the market, what uh, it's recognized for is the ease of use. So gone are the days when you have to implement an LMS for over six months, nine months. With Litmus, you can get uh, up and running very quickly. Typically, rollout is uh, a matter of days, but you can also, as in, you can get everything up and running, including have find all your learners on the platform and your own in uh, days to weeks. So that's that's the time frame you're looking at, uh, and it's something which you don't require IT for assistance. Uh, business usually can manage it themselves. Uh, so you usually day to day you don't need anybody to include in creating reports. Everything about Netflix. Um Now. Uh, I talked about the platform, but there is a, a key advantage of a Litmus is also the SAP Litmus training content. And this is a, a catalog of over uh, 1,500 courses. Again, uh, it's very well known in both UK and in a lot of countries, Australia, US, 
it's it's designed exactly like the platform is. It's designed to engage the audience. It's designed so that uh, people want to go and and access the training. Uh, I'll give you a key example. The one of the examples is GDPR. So how do you make GDPR interesting? And the content tries to do that. A lot of humor, a lot of animation, uh, and you'll see in the style of the content that it's 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 designed in the same way. So platform and content are the two offerings of Litmus. Um, without further ado, let's jump straight into the platform itself. Uh, now. I'm not going to go into too much depth of the platform. If you want to uh, have a full demo, then get in touch later. But what this is Litmus. Uh, Litmus is, is uh, it's a completely white label solution. This is by demo instance of Litmus, but you can brand it how you like. Uh, it can look and feel like your learning platform rather than a generic LMS. Uh, you can also have different experiences for different set of learners. So it's designed in a way that you can have both internal use cases as well as external use cases. So you can have uh, employees, customers, partners, all training in the same platform. Uh, and for each of them, you can have a different experience. Uh, so suppose you're doing customer training and you said my customer training platform should look like this. Uh, each one of these widgets which you see on the screen, I need to resize this. And again, this is not something which you require coding. You can just, just drag and drop, pull and push, that sort of thing. It's easily configurable. So it's very easy to do. Um, now, it's also designed in a way so that learners, it's not complicated for learners to see uh, how to uh, actually do stuff. So when I go into the platform, immediately it tells me what do I need to do? So this is what you need to do. This is what is, I have zero overdue and I've completed two. So these courses which are assigned to me could be uh, stuff which is assigned based on my profile. It is stuff which might be assigned to my manager. It could be a compliance course as well. It could be compliance retake, that sort of thing. And I can get into the content with the minimum amount of clicks. So two clicks, one, and Two, I'm directly into the content itself. So no need to go and find out where you want to go. Do I have to register? Nothing like that. You just get into the course and handle it and get into what you want to do. Um, this, uh, what we have, you can also have structured learning plans so that so people have to follow a certain order. So all new, uh, say you're rolling out onboarding. You can say that, okay, uh, I need a structured learning plan which people need to go through and then they can uh, they can uh, get trained. Now, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a responsive design, so you can access it on any browser, smartphone, tablets, but Litmus also has an app for both iOS and Android, so you can use the app to access the content offline. So if you, if you are traveling by, say, uh, the train and you like you don't have network you can download your your uh, e-learning beforehand and then you can access it while you're in the train or something or, or when your tube well, tube does have network now anyway so that's that's the idea so uh so idea is keep it simple for the learners tell them what they need to do also you have a library of content which is which learners can do self-learning so they can search for content assign themselves content um, we also have a recommended courses widget uh, in which we are increasing the use of ai so that automatically based on who you are it will suggest you content so uh, based on your title based on your uh, what your peers are doing it will suggest content to you as well um, moving on to uh, achievements, it has built-in gamification, so you can have badges, points, uh, leaderboards, uh, connection with social media where you can push this onto uh, LinkedIn or Twitter, uh, or the badge you can push it directly onto LinkedIn as a LinkedIn certificate, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, you can also track competencies, so you can define competency matrix and in your company and then say that, okay, uh, these are the job roles which need to be done. Uh, in order to do those jobs, you need these trainings and then 
uh, when a person is assigned, they need they know what they need to do as well. Okay. Finally, the last experience for a learner is classroom sessions and webinars, and this is where uh, Litmus keeps it simple. So you can you can have classrooms uh, or you can register for classrooms while you're doing the course, but you can also uh, register for classrooms in the dedicated live sessions tab or on the home page, there can be a widget which tells you what you need to register for. But in effect, when you go into a particular uh, classroom session, it will tell you how many seats are available. You can register for it. There's a two-way sync with Outlook so that it keeps your calendars in sync. So everything is enabled so that learners don't forget. They attend classrooms, you can have approvals. So all the features are there for classroom sessions. Webinars are uh, handled in the same way. And Litmus has a two-way integration with WebEx, GoToTraining, and Zoom. We are going to have Teams very soon as well, because that is a common ask. It's going to come in November. So uh, integration with Teams as well. And that's it about, about the learner view of Litmus. Uh, obviously, you can have manager reporting, having people do it. But what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to switch to admin view and show you one key thing, which I think Litmus is really good at, which is how do you create content? And creating content is something which you can do in a matter of minutes. So uh, you can create content, you can create your own SCOM files. So if I said that, okay, I need to create some new training uh, or I need to combine some Litmus provider training with some content which you build, or I want to build some content from outside, uh, say a LinkedIn learning course. You can all do that in Litmus itself. And the front and center, it's very simple to do. You just say, I want to create a course, give it a name, put a thumbnail image, and then say save. And then all you need to do is then add content to this course, wherein you can add modules. Uh, and then you can upload content. Content space is unlimited, so you can have as much content as you want on the system, but then you can combine it with things like assessments, surveys, classroom sessions, checklists. There's also a SCOM authoring solution, as I mentioned, wherein you can create interactive e-learning. So if I said this is a e-learning authoring tool, and that takes you into the author, and then that allows you to create multiple pages with a certain format, with a quiz at the end of it. And then once you're uh, happy with it, after previewing it, you can publish it either into Litmus or even outside Litmus as well. So that's a bit about the content. I'm not going to go into too much depth. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, Donald, Andy, what do we, should we do about questions? Or then should we uh, take questions now? Or I don't think we... So if there are any questions, then uh, then feel free to pipe in in the chat or let me know. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to, we can take a couple of minutes for questions. Yep. Is there any yep. questions just now that that anybody has that they maybe want to ask? Or maybe you could put them in the chat, and uh, Udi, you yep. could uh, you yep. could answer them from 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 there. I can do that. So so as as, as you saw, you can create content in minutes. Uh, you can assign it to various audiences. You can make it available to various audiences. Uh, one last feature, which I think is, is very, very cool, is the ability to create like rules. So workflows, which you say that, okay, based on, uh, based on certain criteria, you need someone assigned to a certain content or groups of content. You can have rules run automatically, which help automate this process. So the whole, whole thing is, you want to ensure that that admins as well have uh, they can get their tasks done with the uh, with the minimum amount of fuss. So creating a rules to automate that make their lives easy as well. Okay. I, I thought of one more thing to mention, and this is again a very cool. I, I don't think I've seen it anywhere else. One one feature which is again very useful is called as video assessments. Now this is specifically useful for uh, sales-based training or customer support-based training. So uh, where you want to see how a person answers, 
rather than what they answer. So video assessments allowed you to create like a, a quiz. And as soon as I press answer, it's going to switch on your webcam and you record an answer on the spot. So for example, uh, all the sales guys uh, in the litmus division, they need to go through a five minute pitch on the key points of SAP litmus. Uh, and that is part of our training routine. And then as soon as we answer, that goes to their manager who reviews the video and gives comment, feedback, and that sort of thing. Now, interestingly, uh, being part of SAP, we have leveraged SAP's investment in AI in order to bring AI into this, into this uh, particular feature, wherein uh, it allows the system checks the answer beforehand and gives feedback to the learner even before they have submitted it. So uh, maybe I'm speaking too quickly, or maybe I, uh, my uh, tone is not warm enough. Or it gives feedback on the spot and it tells you these are the keywords you should be looking for. And then that allows you to get a better answer. So allow makes the learners better and then allows them to uh, submit what they're happy with in the end. So bringing AI, bringing intelligent learning into this, uh, and that is something which you see throughout the platform where you see more and more automation, more and more AI, and that new features, new releases come every quarter as well. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, the last thing which is probably equally important is the reporting. Uh, reporting can be done at various levels of the organization. So allowing you to create reports, but the data which you see is what you are authorized to see. Again, distributing learning throughout the organization. So if I'm in charge of say uh, Leicester as a city and I have all learners in Leicester as my, my, uh, uh, my cohort, then when I go into the system and gather reports, then I can see only people who are reporting to me. And this allows you to create reports, schedule reports, even create custom reports, which will get you data in a specific format with this data and all that. And then you can export it and, and schedule it and stuff like that. So making reporting easy, making it simple so that you can see where, uh, uh, what your usage is, how the system is being used, what the courses are, what the popular courses are, stuff like that. Um, again, uh, conscious that uh, of time, I'm not going to go into too much depth. There are lots of features in Litmus, uh, it's, but designed in a way that it's very accessible to admins and to learners, and you can decide how uh, it can fit your requirement. Uh, Donald, any comment, uh, any, anything you want to add? You're a mute, Donald. Yeah, that was fantastic, Udi. Thank you so much for that. And it really shows the uh, the, 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 the power of the SAP Litmus uh, solution and the great experience that it uh, delivers. So, so thank you very, very much and uh, have a great rest of your day. Um, and if you could hang around, uh, yeah, Udi, in case there's any questions, obviously in the- I'll, I'll uh, handle it on chat. the chat, yes. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be fantastic. Um, so, uh, without further ado, Richard, welcome. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> one second. I'm going to uh, just share my screen, hopefully, here. Fabulous. And, uh, I'm trying to so work I know it. That, uh, here we go. I know that customers really um, um, are, are at the forebed of obviously everything we do at, here at SAP. So, and, and I think the audience is really, um, really keen to hear your story. So over to you. Yeah, delighted to be here. Thank you very much for having me along to just to give you a little bit of a, an overview of what we use SAP Litmos for uh, in Hewlett Packard Enterprise. So I promise not to bore you with too many stats about HPE uh, as we call ourselves, but just to give you some grounding of the context of where we use the platform and how we use the platform, I thought I'd just start out with just a quick who is uh, who are Hewlett Packard Enterprise and specifically I work inside HPE's Ent Education Services Division. Our mission is to train our customers. Really quite sweet and simple uh, you'd think to get done. It's a complex operation. We've been around for a long time. We've been, we've been training people for about 45 years uh, plus as, as a customer trained division. That's predominantly been um, uh, instructor led. Uh, uh, 
in terms of face to face and increasingly remote. We, we adopted remote learning with our instructors uh, about 20, 20 or so years ago w with our own virtual classroom products. So we've been, we'd like to think that we've really been on the edge of adopting the technology ar around learning. And in my role as the learning technology strategist within the customer education division, I'm always looking for new bits of technology that we can use to enhance our digital transformation around this area. Now, the challenge here is quite significant for us. We, we've trained millions of, people, uh, millions of people over the lifetime of the, of the company around there. And today, although Hewlett Packard Enterprise, for those of you who, who may know, is one of the pieces of the original Hewlett Packard company um, that, that's now in four pieces, our bit is to really focus on the enterprise edge to cloud technology and infrastructure piece. So lots and lots of training historically there. Um, we still operate in well over 70 countries today. We operate in multiple languages, multiple currencies, uh, and through multiple um, delivery partners as well, although we do the bulk of our delivery ourselves. We, uh, we've been really, really pushing in, uh, in our digital transformation to try and make sure that we include uh, all of the richness of the instructor-led heritage that we have with our organization. And, and that's really been where we have been focusing over the last two or three years. So we've got lots and lots of labs, lots and lots of instructors, but we knew that we were a little bit behind the game in terms of our self-paced offering. So for the last three years, we've really been trying to expand the usage of self-paced and to blend that in and bring through uh, or, or create an offering that was uh, really fit for purpose in a digitally transformed world. Of course, the pandemic has only accelerated that for us. Uh, we were we were operating at around about maybe 25% e-learning and about overall 50% uh, of our deliveries were remote. And of course, like all of you, I'm sure when the pandemic hit, we went to 100% globally with these things. So having the ability to scale out quickly was, uh, was something that we needed to be able to do with this platform as well. Uh, and as you can imagine with the complexity you see on the screen, that is something that we um, that presented some challenges for us. In addition to this, for the last three years, HPE has been uh, at, the, at the corporate level really focused on its own digital transformation. And there's been an HPE wide effort here uh, around what we call everything as a service. This is where our boss, uh, Antonio, Antonio Neri, has been challenging the company to shift to everything we have. Uh, being available to customers in a cloud-based consumable but uh, consumption build service offering as a subscription basic uh, a based service and that for education was something we thought we could really get behind quite quickly and and really our answer to this was the hpe digital learner product so this product here which i'm talking about here this is really what we use sap litmos to drive and it lit uh, Litmos is at the heart of everything we do around this, and I'll talk a little bit more as we get into this about some of the uh, about some of the areas that we have in terms of integrations. But before we get into there, I wanted to give you an idea of what it is we do with digital transformation. What does we uh, what does this technology translate into for us? Well, in, what we are looking to do with our HPE Digital Learner offering is to provide a really modern environment that that fits with digital transformation for the new learner. So we're talking about people who are not always at their desks who are often working remotely, very much so now, but also we wanted to make sure that as we transitioned away from these intense classroom training offerings where we would maybe see the customer for maybe one or two weeks a year to a model where we could see the customer whenever they needed us, whether they were trying to learn something new, learn something in depth, whether they were trying to apply learning on the job, whether they were in a break fix support environment in our digital customer support experience center, and we wanted to be able to inject training there, or whether they're trying to master something um, or transform their career from, from A to B. They're going from maybe on-premises development to hybrid cloud development, or they are moving from traditional full stack software development to maybe ML ops or AI. Uh, we see a lot of this going on at the moment and it's a, quite a big learning curve to get from A to B there. So we wanted to make sure that we could meet all of those moments of learning need that a customer may have over their journey and really show up at every stage in that journey. Now, now for us, that meant 
with our digital learner offering that we would offer you something that wasn't just a week or two weeks here and there with an instructor. It's an annual subscription. We wanted to make sure we understood what you would, as the customer were trying to achieve with your purchases of HPE products and services so that we could make sure that we had right, the right learning plans and the right learning paths in there for the types of roles that we saw show up in our learning portals. We really wanted to make sure that we didn't lose that instructor-led element as well. So we wanted to make sure you could have this either as a standalone offering, but also something that could complement our traditional learning offerings as well. So something that could bring through and keep that blended learning contact with instructors, with our experts. But we also wanted to make sure at the front of this that we had a modern learning portal that was learner first. We, we work with multiple pieces of learning technology in HPE today, uh, many, uh, multiple LMSs, multiple LMS platforms. Um, and generally, we don't try and compare one with the other because each of them is specifically good at a specific part of our learning journey or a specific job, whether we're training partners or employees or customers. And in this particular case, we needed something that led with the user experience that was nice and easy, didn't overcomplicate the journey. As you heard Uday talk about, never more than a few clicks away from your content, very easy to find. So those are the kind of things we wanted. But we also realized that there were teams of people out there, managers inside organizations that wanted to have some, they wanted to have some element of that corporate experience as well, where they could bring a team in of a small, let's say a team of 10 people uh, uh, transforming into understanding ML ops, for example, something along those lines. And we want to make sure that that team leader could quickly come in, just get a quick view of the kind of training that was available to their team, sign a bit of training around, get some simple metrics and reporting, and make sure that we could do that um, in a way that didn't put too much work on us back in the uh, operations team, but allowed the, the, allowed the team leaders out there, rather than the kind of the L&D managers, if you like, in this particular space, just to have that rapid access to metrics and reporting in the platform. And, and last but not least, Around this, we wanted to be able to integrate this into our HPEY badging framework. So HPE has a whole raft of um, certifications. And what we wanted to do was create underneath there a kind of a stage journey towards certifications, bringing in things like digital uh, rewards and verifiable open badges. And we wanted to have a platform that could easily allow us to uh, award learners and encourage them to go along, their, uh, along the journey. Gamification was useful in that, but we also wanted to have those takeaway resume worthy credentials that people could have on their pathway to certification or even just stop. So that was really the ethos around our HPE digital learner offering that we have out in the market. We've been operating this for the last couple of years. So if I take a little look at how we use specifically uh, SAP Litmos within our environment, we call our digital transformation service internally this is our customer learning as a service offering so when as you heard me talk about earlier when the when the corporation in hpe talks about transforming to everything as a service and being edge to cloud our offering here really we think fits really well with that corporate strategy and, and we've been delighted to be able to use litmos at the heart of what we do here so it was really important within our customer learning as a service uh, offering here within HP Digital Learner. As I said before, we wanted it to be subscription based. We needed to have really strong support for individuals, but also to be able to, to sell and operate teams, smaller teams or smaller or organizations at a very light touch level within the platform. We also wanted to be able to create custom portals of people as well. So um, this doesn't have, this is not a large part of our customer base, but maybe we, we have, we have, let's say less than, about half a dozen out there at the moment of very large customers that we deal with globally who come to us for their training solutions and want to have essentially their own version of HP Digital Learner deployed. So we needed a solution that we could quite easily create completely branded copies of our offering in the customer's brand and livery. We needed to be able to do that quickly. So today we have multiple SAP Litmos portals deployed. Um, we use the multi-account feature on the platform for that. We have a public portal, uh, which is broadly what I'm showing you on these slides here, that talks 
to our main customer base and this is where we'll find uh, all of our all of our students that are not in an not in one of those enterprise special subscriptions and we'll also have a number of other portals that we deploy for specific customers or specific purposes and those generally can be in different brands they might have different SSO integrations or single sorry, single sign on integrations for security um, and, and other API integrations that we might do there but if I come back to our main usage of Litmos which is our our public portal so this is our if you go out to education.hp.com slash digital learner you'll come to, to to this site that I'm showing you here or the architecture I'm showing you here this one has the majority of our offerings in it so right now today we have about 25,000 users that we've put through in the last 12 months on this platform um, we generally see something uh, around about 500 to 1,000 active users on the platform every month. Uh, so it's a relatively modest deployment, but we see the more important thing is, is that we don't see huge peaks. We see that nice regular consumption curve, which is what we're trying to encourage. We don't want users to have to come in and have that five day intensive training. We want to be able to be there, show up in their journey, as I said before, and really wanted to make sure that we have that service. So we see that kind of usage pattern. We've got 12,000 courses and learning paths in the platform. Um, about 1,000 of those are HPE, our own technology, but we also have a mix of different content partners where we'll select from other content partners and we will bring in that content and blend it together into learning paths or journeys that are useful around uh, industry standard concepts before we get into HPE technology specifics. Now, one of the key things for us here was that really easy to use intuitive learner interface. We, we needed to make sure that the user could come in and you'll see with, as Uday showed, and you, you will as well, if you want to come, you can, you can get demos of our digital learner platform to see it in real life, uh, or you can, I know you can get demos uh, of the Litmos platform as Uday mentioned. One thing that struck us pretty quick was this is clearly learner centric, right? It's, a, it's an easy learner dashboard, an easy learner content library, we, of those 25,000 users we put through last year, the vast majority of them came through in a two month period where we offered everything that we did in HPE on this service for free to anyone in the world as part of our response to the pandemic. And SAP Litmos were great partners during that program that we did. And one of the key outcomes from that was, as we found a lot of information about how users use the platform. So on our support ticketing desk, very pleased to say we had just over 100 tickets from the 25,000 users and uh, not one of them was around usability or I can't find this or I can't find that. It was all around, I forgot my password, those kind of things, or um, where's my badge? Why haven't you issued me my certificates yet? Those kind of things, or can I have an extension to my free learning trial? So those are the kind of things that we saw quite regularly. So that was validated, we think, really in that crucible of the heat of the pandemic last year, um, when we had loads of people showing up, trying to do additional training, really trying to transform careers, build those technical skills that they needed at pace. So it was nice to be able to see that flexibility, but also that ease of use. Quick and easy to deploy, really key thing for us as well. We wanted to be able to get up and running quite quickly, but we're also learning as we go. We certainly don't know everything there is to know about digital transformation in learning. We're learning as we go along. We're, we're learning at quite a pace. So we deploy new versions of this product, whether it be new branding or changes to our user experience or new content packs on a regular basis. We also have customers that come along and say they, they would like to expand into their own version of their own, their own private portal, as we call them. And we need to be able to deploy those platforms within one to two weeks for them, fully branded with all their content, all of their library, first learner on board. Uh, and we're able to do that with SAP Litmos at scale. I'm, I've been involved personally in five major enterprise LMS deployments. This is one of the easiest ones I've seen to be able to deploy at scale. Uh, it, we are not deploying across, say, a full L&D type deployment, which generally take longer. But for the purposes we're using here, we can deploy this really, really quickly. It's got extensive branding capabilities, so we're able to put it in our own livery. So if you go to our own version, in fact, we're doing a refresh of this at the moment. We've been uh, working with SAP to get them to help us by showing uh, uh, showing us customers that are doing a really good job of branding the platform and we've learned quite a bit in that research and that journey and we're now embarking on uh, some really nice new features and some tweaks in terms of deploying some of the html banners that we can do out there we were able to get a lot of that information out of the litmos dojo so our our development team is able to pull out sample code and bring all those pieces across and really we're starting we're continuing our journey to really extensively brand the platform 
we also have got great feedback from our customers who are surprised at how fast we can put the platform into their own livery. Uh, so that's something that we really enjoy being able to do. Now, the diagram on the right you see here with all the little wiring bits, um, I wanted to show you not only that Litmos was at the heart of our, um, uh, our operations around Digital Learner, but it's also a system that plays nicely with others. And as a learning architect, that's something that's particularly useful and interesting to me as well. So without wanting to get too technical here, it is important, I think, these days, my view uh, is that we, we, we're not so much deploying single LMS infrastructures where we expect one platform to do everything in our environment. We don't think that's a credible view in complex situations. So when we're selecting learning technology, we want it to be able to play nice with others. We want it to realize that the world isn't going to rotate around it. It might look like that inside the learning team, but when you integrate it into other parts of your ecosystem, you need to have something that's going to plug nicely into that and really be an integral part of a scaling learning technology ecosystem. And that's one of the reasons, again, why we like SAP Litmos. It does have those extensive API endpoints. We use that, and I'll just talk you through the example on the screen here. We use that quite extensively to automate a lot of our operations. So although we, I, I work for a large company, the customer education team is by no means large and our operations team is very small. So we have to make sure that we can manage this platform globally and we can't be having uh, users set up by hand. So we need to make sure that we can have things like trial signups. One of our key parts of our everything as a service is a try before you buy piece. So we want learners to be able to come in, sign up for trials. We want those to get detected automatically without having to go to our IT department. We want to be able to use things like Zapier or in this, in our case, uh, Microsoft Flow from their Power Platform solution and build simple rapid deployed uh, automation workflows that can do things like learner entitlement, trial signups, do some basic messaging without having to deploy um, big marketing automation here. So we can send simple welcome messages, check if they've logged in, send them a thank you message or a nudge message, depending on where they are in that trial. We also want to be able to take orders from customers um, when those trials turn into orders and get them set up in the system really quickly. It's, it's always painful, we find, when we tell people that you've got all this on tap instant learning and it takes us two weeks to process your order and get you up and running on the system. So we need to make sure that people, um, we do a better job of that. And one of the ways we do that is by making sure that as soon as we have a confirmed order, that we can set the system, that we run this thing multiple times a day and we pick up those orders and automatically entitle people in the platform, get them in the right team, send their welcome messages out and get them into the system and get them into those onboarding and adoption journeys that we need them to do over the course of their subscription year. Um, we also integrate it with our own SSO platform. So we have two SSO platforms, one for internal users, one for our customers. Uh, we have an internal version of, of uh, an internal private portal that we use. It's exactly the same as the public one, except it's hooked in with our internal SSO. And we do that to try and use that as kind of like a staging platform. So our early release, and we will trial things on our own internal learners, and they get access to all of the technical training for free within the company. Um, and we do that key SSO integration there. We also, and this is a really important part for us as well, we also bring stuff out to our data lake. So the other thing we do here is we pull data from, uh, from Litmos, and in fact, multiple sources. This is quite a simplified diagram. And we pull that out every day into our data lake and make sure that we have a really clear view of that. So as you might imagine, whilst it's important for our customers to have their teams and organizations be able to learn and use these parts of the platform, it's really important for our product managers, our, our portfolio owners, our support staff to be able to look at that data, our custom success teams, and really see who's using what, who's onboarding, who's not onboarding, and to be able to get those in readily accessible learn analytics dashboards. Last but not least, I mentioned that we do badges and, and, and verifiable credentials there. I think the other key piece of the platform for us is making sure that we can, uh, we can when, when a learner's achieved something, there's not, again, a, a long delay between them achieving something and getting the rewards of their achievement. In our case, that's often issuing a verifiable badge. Um, we use, a, we use a, an online badge provider for this service. 
And we're also able to use things like webhooks in the platform to be able to say when a user's achieved a certain, uh, when they've achieved, when they've met the requirements of an achievement, or increasingly we're looking at, at gamification paths as well, when they've earned that Litmos badge, we can also then credential that externally and, 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 and invite them to take up this verifiable uh, credential that they can then add to their LinkedIn profile uh, and, and, and really build that digital resume and show that they're digitally transforming their career on our platform as well. So that's a, a whistle-stop tour through our environment. Um, I will leave that there, uh, Andrew and Don, and pass it back to you. I'm very happy to take any questions about any part of that. Fabulous, Richard, and, and thank you so much for uh, such an insightful, uh, for, for an insightful presentation. Really, really enjoyed it. So uh, thank you uh, very much. We have a, a couple of minutes possibly for, for, for questions. If there's uh, any questions from the, the floor, pop them in the chat. Um, um, feel free to, to do that um, um, or, or let, let us know. I've got a question for you, Richard. Um, uh, you know, in, in, in terms of that, that, that journey, is, is there any kind of things that you wish you'd known at the beginning that, that would have made it easier or is there... What, 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 what's your kind of view? Is, is there any kind of nuggets of, uh, mm. of inspiration you can give? Yeah, let me, I'll just, I'll realize I haven't thrown my video on for that, but I'll do that now. <laughs> yeah. uh, hi. Yes, um, hi. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I would say, oh yeah, mistakes is always an interesting one, isn't it? In terms of what we did. So Not I so would, much mistakes. It's but, just well, I of, think we, those yeah. are really important though. Those are the most expensive lessons. So yeah, I think if we were doing it again, so the things that we would advise people to do some of those things are kind of key with with Litmos, but I think that the I think getting your team structure and the way you deploy your content is really important. There's some lovely features in Litmos um, that have actually been added while we've been on there around content collections, and that's got us scratching our head and thinking, oh, okay, if we'd have known that when we were starting, what would we have done differently? So I think. Uh, designing, making sure that you understand the way your content is deployed. I, I, what, what we've found with 12,000 courses in the platform is we were solving yesterday's problem. You know, yesterday's problem was I haven't got enough learning. Well, there you go. We've got this huge dump truck of learning that we've now given you. So now the problem is findability, right? So making sure that users can quickly go, well, now I've got so much training. They get away from that idea of I've got so much training, I don't know what to do with it. Um, organizing that and curating that and making sure that you can support the curation of that so we we build our release structure and around things like branding and content release but we also require now we've learned this that our curation teams also start to treat this a bit like software so they have like an agile release flow and they'll have sprints around content curation where they'll say this we need to bring on another five learning paths because we've seen people complaining about this or not being able to find that or we've got this new technology or people you know we're starting to see people not using these areas of the content so we need to try and see if they need to go away or if we need to curate those into different learning paths so now um we're finding that this isn't technology led. We're finding that uh, the technology is simple enough to wire up that we can get out of the way in my team. And really we're spending our time building those analytics pieces and building those, um, uh, building those tools to help our curation team who want to do more and more and more and more and more to not add more content, but to organize it. So I think we're still learning there, as you can probably tell from my long answer, but, but that's certainly where we're, where we're headed and one of the key learnings, I would say, of the platform. You're on a you're on a journey, most definitely, and, yeah, and, I, sure. and I love that. I, I I love the fact that um, uh, every everyone's on a on a journey, and 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 certainly, uh, you know, really understanding the the, the, the kind of roadmap and and what are the, the the new features and functionalities, and 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 obviously at, at SAP, uh, many of the great ideas come directly from 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 customers, which is uh, which is really fabulous. I mean, one more question for me, just because I can't see any in the chat, sure. so I'll, I'll just uh, I'll I'll just my, ask my own question. Where, where where do you think? I mean, a lot of uh, great uh, innovation coming around machine learning and the use of algorithms and things. Where where do you see that? Yeah, that's a really interesting one, isn't it? Because there's a huge amount of hype. Uh, and a huge amount of interest in AI and machine learning within these platforms. I think um, the challenge for us as a, uh, even, even as a large company, we 
we don't generate a huge amount of trained data sets in there, of, of a large data set of data points. So for us, I think the key for us is about making sure we don't just look at AI around the learner. I think AI around the learner is fantastic. And I think the more we can get around, uh, we can get machine recommendations done around our model. I think that's good. But honestly, I think that'll be a little bit further away for us because we've got maybe thousands of training data points for our customers rather than maybe the hundreds of millions that you might need for a really, really polished AI learning model. So we think that's a bit further down the roadmap for us, but we see um, we see the use of AI and ML within learning technology as having huge benefits elsewhere within our platform around automation. So there's a lot said about learner recommendations, there's a lot said about adaptive learning, and I think those things work beautifully and, uh, and we are following that with great interest we know on the litmus roadmap there's some nice features coming this year for that what we're looking to do is to see that we can blend things so we want to make sure that we can say yeah that while the model's learning we still recommend this or that or bring new courses to the top and bring those to interest to people and while we're getting ready for that wave of of um uh, of ai for the learner we're also working at the back office, which I think is a little bit overlooked here. So there are ways, for example, of us using uh, um, uh, using analytical models, using AI to bring out insights. So we'll what we find is that we do have enough data around the use of these 12,000 courses to start getting insights that otherwise would take us days or hours or frankly just wouldn't get done. So we're using things like Power BI to bring out AI insights from our data set. Just for our portfolio managers to let them know what's being used what's not being used and what the trends are and what they might want to look out for and where they're going to end up in three months we're using it for custom success as well to detect things like customer health be able to calculate customer health scores we're also uh, wiring up our survey platform to read the comments uh, you might imagine with uh, we do about 50,000 learners through our classroom a year and another 25 through this I'd love for our eight portfolio managers to read every comment but the reality is they don't do that um, and we want to be able to do things like, for example, read the sentiment of the comments that get posted in the forums and be able to say this person's really upset and they need some help now and get on that now, not in a month's time when the storage portfolio manager looks at that kind of thing. Or if a customer is really delighted and is asking for help and where to go next, we want to be able to surface, if you like that, reduce that signal to noise ratio between the chatter that goes on in the comments in the platform and bring out the things that we want to do. So we think there's some, there's some nice usage, even for smaller teams like us that maybe can't make use of massive ML um, learning recommendation models just yet um, to start to adopt and learn those technologies in a safer way in our back office that can take out work add automation uh, and and really start to bring it down I think that's the journey that we're looking forward to over the next year to 18 months hopefully then arriving in a bit more of a um, advanced headspace around AI and ML because frankly we're learning that too and then be able to make some intelligent uses because I think we've all been on those chatbots that offer ridiculous responses or recommendations that just simply you think I don't know who these recommendations are for but they're clearly not for me or it's the same every time you want to avoid some of those pitfalls so we're a little bit leery of jumping head first into that but we think that back office experience can build those skills. Thank you very much. And I love a bit of sentiment analysis, nothing like yeah. it. So <laughs> it sounds good, it? Yeah. I, I, I could talk to you for hours, um, Richard. So thank you so much uh, for, um, um, for giving us your time. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you to all our speakers. And of course, you, our guests, uh, without customers. Um, Andy, do you have a final word to say? Yeah, really just to echo your, your, uh, your sentiment, Donald. Thank you very much to everyone for joining today, particularly to the speakers. It was really great to hear your insight into uh, HPE, Richard. So thank you very much for that. Um, of course, we will follow up with everyone in due course. Um, but if uh, in the meantime, if you would like to find out more, then please visit our website. There's a, there's a link there. Um, and you can also request a, a free trial or a demonstration as well. So thank you very much. We hope Thanks you very much, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.